Hey guys, I just got my ass handed to me and it was in an unusual opening and it was with a gambit that I have never seen before, I've never heard before. So I have to say thank you to uh, Dubsy for introducing me to this gambit. It's called the O'Sullivan Gambit. Um, let me take you through the game. It doesn't last long, right? We have e4, knight to f6, which is the Alakine defense, right? And obviously, now what's really interesting is that I've just start, I just did some research on Lee Chess, as you may have seen in my previous, my last chessable video. Um, I was looking for um, a spicy and interesting response to 1e4, right? That isn't the Sicilian and isn't the French and isn't the Scandi and all those kinds of things. It's something that my opponents are not going to know how to deal with, uh, not going to be familiar with facing. And the Alakine defense is like the 10th most popular response to 1e4. Um, however, it scores really well up to 2000. So, um, and, and, and it's all wrong. Everything, everything about this defense is wrong because you're just inviting your opponent to play e5, grab space on your side of the board, force your knight to move with tempo, and then the most natural move, obviously, is d4 to follow this up. So I just started looking at playing the Alakine defense for black. And I'm going to start looking a bit harder now because there is this, you know, you, you want extra chili on that. You've got extra chili on that because check out what my opponent does now. B5, right? And this is, this is just crazy. Okay. Um... It's the B-pawn. It seems to be completely pointless. Okay. And it's hanging. Now, at this point, my spider senses should have gone tingle. Right? But I, I thought, come on then. What you got? So I grabbed the free pawn. Okay. Now, my opponent now plays E5. Apparently offering me the second pawn. Now, what do we know, boys and girls, about capturing the second pawn? Okay, you never capture the second pawn. If your opponent seems to be giving you pawns for free, you should smell a rat straight away. So I didn't do that. I just dropped my bishop back here because I'm smart. And I thought I'm going to attack the knight. But if the knight comes, like wherever the knight goes, right? And if I can kick it again, I might get this square. And if I get this square, I might get that rook. And if I get that rook, I win. Ha ha ha. And then my opponent does something most peculiar. He captures on d4, giving me a knight. And not only is he giving me a knight, if I capture the knight, there's no defense for his stupid rook. Right? If he blocks with the bishop, I get that as well. And then I get the rook. It's like, ha ha, this guy's a dumbass. This guy's going to get schooled. So I take the knight, obviously. And now the queen comes out to a5, and this is where it gets interesting. So, um, obviously, this comes with check. Obviously, this comes with a fork on the bishop. And if you play the England gambit, um, this kind of might start to feel a bit familiar. So then I think, well, how can I possibly defend my bishop? I really want that rook, yeah? Well, I get the rook, then it's plain sailing. So knight to c3 and i figure if he takes my knight with the pawn aha i get the rook and i win hooray okay so let's see how it goes he takes the knight i take the rook haha -ha. and now i'm up a rook i'm up a rook and you got nothing right but it's black's turn black captures on b2 oh no so what do you do Right? Uh, not only does he capture on b2, it's a discovered check. You bastard. You utter, utter bastard, right? So, now I'm going, this isn't working out how I planned. So, bishop d2, figuring, okay, maybe if he wants to come here, capture my rook, get a queen, I'll get his queen. So, we're kind of quits. But no. He takes on e5 with check. 
You utter, utter, utter bastard. Right, knight blocks. Now he gets a queen. I take it. He takes mine. I block. I castle. And from being apparently up, a, up a, a rook, which I was, I was plus five in material, suddenly I'm a queen and a pawn down and my bottom hurts and I need some pseudocrem ASAP. What the hell is this gambit? So, yeah, we had a little discussion in the chat and he said the uh, immortal words, Eric Rosen. Rosen? You're a bastard too, right? You're teaching people gambits, but I'm going to come to you, Rosen. I'm going to learn this gambit and I'm going to take people apart with it because I love it. So apparently there's all kinds of trips and traps and all kinds of stuff in there. Now, so here's the analysis board, right? And this is all book, 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 right? So I've played this opening 444, 445 times with a 52% win rate, not bad at all. Now, in master games, apparently, you take the pawn. And that has a 50% win rate, 50% loss rate. So it probably hasn't been played that many times. Okay, so I, I took the free pawn and the computer says, that's absolutely fine. Now this is the best move. All right, now I come here, which is good. So what should I have done? Because I'll tell you what, I'm building my own chessable course on this. So help me. What I should have done is knight to d2. And I'm plus 1.7, but I didn't do that. I did this, All right? And then he takes that, which is apparently inaccurate, according to the computer. So if you're a computer, you shouldn't play that move. Then I take the knight, and that's the best move. And now I'm plus two. Get in! And now this. And this is where it all starts to go horribly wrong, because I, well, I blocked that. This is a great move. There's only one good move, and I found it. Yes, get in, hunty, right? And this apparently is a blunder. It's an absolute blunder if you are a machine. So actually now my queen is defending the bishop. Let's think about this. Because I know I on the next move I take the rook and it loses. And I go from plus six to minus twelve. I am dead lost, okay, at this point. All right, so. Let's think this through. My queen is now defending the bishop because the pawn has moved out of the way. So maybe what I need to do here is b3. Just b3. And he still can't block with the bishop. He could actually block with the knight. I didn't really see that as an option. Okay. But I've just, I've just walked straight into the gaping mouth of this gambit. So I do that. So what should I have done? B4. What the hey? Well, you know what that is doing? At least moving the B pawn, it's removing the option for this pawn to take there and attack all my, all my stuff on the back rank. Right, so I'm attacking the queen. The queen can't take the bishop. So what's the continuation? Let's have a look. Queen goes there, I get the rook. And I'm plus six and I win. What the hell? Did I just see? Well, I'll tell you what, I am dialing up Eric Rosen, if not now, first thing tomorrow on YouTube, and I am going to learn this gambit because it is sexy as hell. Okay, so um, guys, expect to see one or two videos coming up on the, what is it? O'Sullivan Gambit. Now, apparently I played 86 and got my ass completely shredded and he only played 88 percent right and he's 1366 but i'll tell you what this is going straight in my repertoire straight in there now i'm sure that it doesn't have legs um so if we go on the explorer uh let's see in fact yeah so let <clears throat> let's look at look how do the masters do on this okay and how many times has it been played? Because I'm sure it's it's probably deeply unsound. I'm even automatically pushing e5, okay? This, 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 and now b5. So 
This move has been played 18,000 times. We've seen this position by masters. These are the clever ones, right? And b5 has been played, yes, exactly twice. <laughs> twice! That's it. It's been played twice. And then the bishop always takes. And it's 50-50 from here. So who's played it? Who's played it? A gab, someone... Okay, so it's been played, it doesn't even tell you the year. Oh yeah, 92, and then once in 1964. So it ain't the most popular thing. So let's check out Lee Chess, Opening Explorer. And let's see, so it's, it's completely, you know, completely unsound for the masters. Oh look, I've got dark mode, that's good. All right, let's go Opening Explorer. And let's look at everyone. So one thing that you have to remember, someone reminded me, is that the, the ratings on Lee Chess are about kind of 25% higher than the equivalent on chess.com. So somebody who's like 1200 on chess.com might be 1400, 1500 or so on Lee Chess. So I've got this set to 1600 to 1800. Let's go rapid and blitz just for shits and giggles, okay? So let's play the Alakine Defense and this and this. And let's see on here. B5, where is it? Number seven in our list. Number seven, yeah. And it has a 53% win rate for black. Cool. And now bishop takes, is it like almost ubiquitous? And then C5. And then everyone plays what I play, this, right? And then the pawn always takes. So sometimes bishop b7. That's not a bad idea. Okay. So c takes d4. Queen takes d4. Okay. So, right. That's interesting. And that's, you know, this is kind of balanced. But basically what we're seeing is that... let's so let's go back. From here, there are a lot of ways for black to go wrong. Okay. So let's filter it down to rapid and, sorry, for, yeah, for white to go wrong. So look, these top responses, 54% for black, 57% for black, 40% for black with c4. c4 is apparently the best move here, uh-huh, for white. But yeah, this is scoring pretty well, but more than that, it's a whole heap of fun. So I'm going to look me up this opening, the O'Sullivan Gambit. I'm going to uh, pay all due record, uh, respect and accord to Mr. Um, Rosen for drawing everyone's attention to it. But yeah, what fun, what fun, what fun, what fun. Um, so yeah, I'll probably be making some videos on this very soon, guys. Watch this space. See you later.